Okay. Hello, everyone. Back again. And uh, while I'm waiting for a few of you to get in, I will light up my organic cigarette. Thank you. Well, so titled this uh, Ascension Guidance, and I will answer any questions uh, on the Ascension, uh, personal questions that can assist ones going forward, and also perhaps to uh, get a better understanding of what's occurring, and even a deeper understanding of what is exactly transpiring upon the planet from the divine uh, perspective and in relation with the overall divine plan. So having said that, is it is an individual ascension, but it is also a whole ascension which involves uh, and affects the entire planet. So having said that, each is part of the whole. And uh, it mostly begins with uh, the individual journey at doing the inner work and uh, empowering oneself. And it is for a very important reason, for we are in unprecedented times from the human perspective. And of course, we are divine and we exist for all time at the soul level. and uh, But uh, because of several things that uh, we don't need to get into, or I don't feel to, at this time we are having a planetary ascension and it is very real and uh, it's multifaceted as well as multidimensional. So there is a lot of very cool and uh, glorifying experiences, if you will, that is attached with this ascension. And having said that, though, there is the messy parts in the beginning when one begins to do their inner work to become aligned with the ascension. And, you know, for the most part, the inner work is the total opposite of what you were taught and even trained to be as a human. So there is that contradiction to that. And it's part of leaving go of the old human ways uh, to fully, to more fully embrace uh, your divine being and also to access your divine knowledge and also to activate more of your multi-dimensional abilities and your divine prowess and your divine gifts. Having said this, this is not happening for uh, just by random, if you will, the, the ascension, the great awakening, whatever you wish to put on it. There's a very important reason for it. And everything that all of you have done with your inner work and with yourself at transitioning it uh, forward and metamorphing, if you will, uh, it, there's a very important reason attached to it. You're, you're not doing it for nothing and just to be a, a better person. Uh, you know, in these, if you look at it from the 4D perspective, these dire times, uh, you see that each one of you is in uh, divine need upon the planet. And then you begin to realize more that there is a purpose attached and also a mission, and that there is most definitely the reason, you know, why you have gone through all this. So you are experiencing uh, a reality that is different to those that are not awakened. However, every moment more and more are awakening and seeing the reality of the old, but also seeing how distasteful it is and that it no longer serves. So it is a process with it which does occur. 
I'll check a couple comments and see how this is running and see what the questions are instead of Rick rambling. I believe we have a question there. Hi, Nancy, Sonia, Lynn, Kyle. Everything is great here. Uh, Kyle asks, how am I? Uh, always great and, you know, always just so busy, divinely working. And uh, I know the great rewards that is coming. So uh, I and Femka, we work very uh, divinely hard at uh, getting it all done, if you will, uh, from uh, a co-creator, a creator standpoint, I, I will say as well, you know, with the, um, with the overall ascension, there is a divine order and structure uh, to it. It's not chaotic. Everything may look like it's chaotic, what's happening, uh, but it all needs to be destructed to allow for the construction and the convergence of humanity to go forward. <clears throat> so there is the full <clears throat> rhyme and reason to everything happening. And uh, we know the great rewards that are, are coming, uh, that are here, if you will, and we're bringing more of that into fruition and creation with every passing moment. Not only Femka and I, all of you and all of the, if you will, the divine ground crew that is upon the planet, and of course the galactics, uh, the benevolent uh, ETs and other light beings and multi-dimensional beings as well, and of course, uh, mother and father creator and all of the angelic and arch and archangelic realm as well all inclusive so having said this everything is guaranteed it's ascertained with this ascension at going forward and uh, we are doing a, an incredible job all of you all of us combined we have taken uh, 10 years of linear time and compressed it into a couple linear years, you know, just as of late, uh, because of all the perseverance of the light, uh, the strengthening with one's empowerment and their gifts. So it has shortened a lot of the duration of the ascension, which is very great news for it. And uh, so we're doing great. Okay. I'll have a look, uh, see what we got. And hello all, and thank you for joining. Love and light to you all. Okay, Karen, uh, she says, Hi, Rick, I would love your perspective on this pressure there is at the moment to enforce this digital ID globally. Okay, there's two perspectives with this. So to enforce a digital ID globally, with that, what you can say, the higher perspective, it's not really needed uh, from the lower perspective. However, you have this forcing upon those that are just at not awakened and just beginning to w awaken by these sort of measures being imposed upon them, which is the pressure, what this does is it forces these ones to make choices, to say enough is enough, and to stand and get the direction toward the solution and what's new. So this is all divinely orchestrated to pressure these ones and to know, you know, how inhumane and uh, how, with the lack of compassion and love, these measures are. So it's a divine mechanism to direct ones into uh, the solution way with it. And uh, that is, for the most part, the, the best way to look at it. Now, Karen, uh, if you have more questions in relation to that, put them down below, and I will... Uh, come back, if you will, to uh, this topic. So thank you for that.
Okay, questions? Anyone? And perhaps I may need to go right back to that one now and expand a little bit on what Karen said. So anyone with questions, put them in the chat and I will answer them. So I'll go back, Karen, to what you asked and you said I would love your perspective on this pressure that is at the moment to enforce the digital ID globally. So it's just so many, generally, there are so many measures and movements towards that uh, that looks like it's doom and gloom, if you will, for humanity, but it's not. It, it's serving the purpose to liberate humanity. So what ones need to know is that you're not bound by these, uh, uh, these what you call uh, impositions. It, it's, they are there for you to make a choice in all. And as you can see globally, uh, every country more and more are making the choices. How's my, uh, how's my stream going, everyone? Are we still streaming pretty good? Still streaming good, so yeah, any other questions come up? says the dark's power grid is right down now right rick time for benevolent ets to land well let's say with this lambert uh <clears throat> that the dark's power grid was never a threat to any of the ascension in anyone at any given time in the blink of an eye their old power structure carpet uh, can be ripped out from underneath their feet. So they are no, never a threat. But what's occurring is the transitional process uh, to awaken others. So this is why, you know, the darkness, if you will, are playing a role to awaken more with it. But in reality, they have no power. They are fourth dimensional beings. All of us, all ascending, are multi-dimensional beings. So just with that one statement, uh, you can see how you are more powerful than any of the dark. So it's just uh, transitioning uh, the human playground very quickly to put ones in places of power and not having them being controlled and suppressed. So we are going through this transition to awaken the other ones uh, that are not awakened enough to support the new reality. Now at the same time, you have so many levels of awakening consciousness. And what we are doing, I and uh, Femka, as being guardians if you will, in guides of the ascension, we continuously keep putting uh, our efforts and focus into creating the new. So while the old is destructing, we need all of the powerful co-creators in energizing and creating the new. So at the same time you have destruction of the old, you have the construction of the new, the pure system that is absent and void of any of the darkness and things from the past. So it is all occurring in with any of you. You can just look around you and when you take uh, <clears throat> the higher perspective and look down upon the planet neutrally, 
then it gives you a better idea of what is occurring and most certainly you need to put the divine aspect rate in the equation of what's occurring on the planet and uh, for very good reason and when you add the divine element into the equation you begin to see that uh, everything is by design and it's not per se uh, to mean harm it's to advance humanity forward so <clears throat> also the galactics if you will are here and at any given time the galactics the benevolent ets whatever you wish to call them uh, many of you are seeing the ships in the sky more and more of you are getting a video uh, capture of them and seeing some uh, quite beautiful maneuvers uh, so that cannot be refuted uh, nor denied even by a lot that are not awakened you will see in the past, you know, with ones that weren't even awakened, that at least 70% perhaps uh, felt and thought, you know, they were not alone, that humanity was not alone. So that's, that's a high number, and, uh, and, and it is very real, and it's very true, and having said this, I am connected to... Uh, the benevolent ETs and the galactic forces as well. They are playing an important role in assisting and assuring this ascension in whatever way that they may need to as well. So everything is uh, going forward perfect with that. So at any given time, uh, Lambert, if uh, the benevolent ETs must land, uh, they will. And having said this for anyone, uh, if we have landings before uh, the new earth is created, if, if it is needed and if there is landings uh, for all of you, you will know what is the real thing for you will feel it in your heart and you will see the demeanor of the beings that you meet so there is to be no fear for there is no malevolent ets that can infiltrate uh, or do anything to anyone so this is assured from a higher divine level yes uh, some of you and perhaps many of you have had your own encounters with some of the nefarious uh, um, ETs, if you will, or the nefarious, uh, yeah, ETs, and a lot of that, you know, you're still here, so it shows you they did not have the power uh, to do anything over you, and in reality, um, you were subjugated to nefarious or malevolent ETs uh, to overcome your fear and to build your trust in who you are and your connection to the divine and to fully and to more empower you so it was part of your training as well uh, to overcome and master fear which is so important. So as you master fear, it's replaced with your divine identity, and with your divine identity comes more of the knowing of who and what you are, your divine gifts and your divine abilities, and comes more of the role as well that uh, you can say you remember or are open to receiving uh, the part that you play in this uh, script so it, it is all by grand design and it's very beautiful and <clears throat> no one is ever harmed having said this you may have had uh, loved ones that have ascended through the death process <clears throat> but with that again you see what I said they have ascended through the death process and they are not dead if you will for the soul never dies so there are different things that occur 
uh, for the most part, six billion of humanity are ascending with the physical body intact to the fifth dimensional state of being. And then among those six billion are you, are us, which is a smaller margin that will continue on with your multi-dimensional experiences in whatever way it was decided by each individual soul, whatever they decided to do. And no one is to say the exact numbers or no one is to say, okay, you are ascending uh, to 7D or you are staying here. No one can say that for anyone for all that information is contained within the individual in your connection to source prime creator. <clears throat> okay, Rita Marie says, Hi Rick, any tips for managing the body transition through all of the solar flares and upgrades? Yes, thank you uh, Rita for that. Uh, some of the tips is, is to recognize the energies what are coming in and then it gives you more information on how to contend with them or how to navigate uh, by feeling them. So as we continue forward, as most of you are finding, you are becoming more sensitive and susceptible uh, <clears throat> to the activity from the sun, which is very real because it's very important. There is not just one photonic light element that comes from the sun as one energy. There is a wide array of energies that are particular at times and are specified uh, to do certain things with the physical vessel and also to do things with the overall reality. So <clears throat> when you understand more of the types of the energy applications from the sun to the planet, then it becomes more easier uh, to navigate. So having said this, yes, there is uh, the solar flares distribute upgrades. Now, as a result of one's experience in what we call ascension symptoms and discomforts at times, this is why everyone has been prior to this intense time, has been told to take very good care of your physical vessel. Uh, watch what you are putting in it, be very meticulous and keep your vessel as clean as possible. And for those that have kept their vessels as clean as possible, the discomforts from the evolution within, the transitioning of the carbon base to the crystalline body, the symptoms are not as discomforting or, or as harsh. Uh, and one of the reasons for this is because uh, the energetic value of a vessel that someone took care of and not putting chemicals in and all of the other uh, ascension inhibitors well then, you have more energy that is accessible uh, to you that also doesn't need to be purified. So these upgrades that are coming in is also a purification process. But once this energy comes in, if you have a lot of chemical residue in your cells, well, it's going to cause uh, variations in uh, your electrical rhythm and all of this, and it will equate into discomforts and even pain. So one, again, needs to be very meticulous uh, with, their, with their vessel and follow uh, what you are putting into it and, and keep it the cleanest, you know, as you possibly can. Uh, recognizing the different types of energy applications from the sun to the surface is important. There are times when there will be, uh, if you watch the sun's activity, there will be the coronal holes that will give a, uh, a wind speed 
of uh, density, of dense protons that come to the surface. And this application of dense uh, protons is it, what it does, it's for the ones that are still not awakened. It's a density, it's a pressure that comes. However, for ones that are awakened, you will feel it as well because it's all the environment is dense with this dense energy and it's to pressure ones to awaken and uh, to begin going through their process but for ones that are awakened when you feel it the tips are to move slow do not expend your energy and at that time when density is in the air don't get caught into any drama any negativity those are the times that it's best to turn the cheek and, and be wise because you don't want to attract a lot of that density and negativity in you because then you can become inundated and it will haul you down. So it's good to be wise uh, with that. Now, when you have uh, done all of your inner work that you are clear of the fear in the negative uh, actions and reactions. So upon mastery of your inner work, when you have done that, when you no longer have it inside of you, where it is what you have is uh, uh, almost complete trust and almost complete love, then when you feel some of these negative things within you, because you're an empath, this you can distinguish where it's not your own. So then it can be coming from a multiple places. It could be coming from another that you're in close contact with, or it can be coming from the collective energetic consciousness. So the main thing, the answer to navigating through both of those is knowing that you have done your own inner work so then you don't own what you're feeling. You know that it's not yours. It's either a personal thing that someone else has, which is negative, or it's a collective thing. So the process to do that is to go into your transmuting when you feel it and to this negative energy to transmute it by using your love and your gratitude and raising your vibration. Uh, if you are feeling it from another, remember that you are also uh, one to assist and teach. Any of the empaths are so very powerful and the empaths are here to transmute the negative energies and uplift others. But you're not condemned to that. The empath ability is very important and very powerful. It's just that you're not may not be seeing it the reasons why you were the empath, but it's coming here shortly for most of the density uh, that needed to be to ascend has been cleared and we are in constant upliftment. So it's good to be informed on what types of energy is out there so you know what uh, you are dealing with and also uh, it's important if you need to lay down, if you get hit, uh, it's usually at this time, it's uh, C-class flares that are administering the bodily upgrades and activating more of the crystalline DNA. So with these, you may get hit very quick and got to go and rest. And with that, don't fight it. Uh, it's important that... Uh, you go with it and if you lay down you may find you might only need to lay for 15 minutes and then it the upgrades get integrated but if you don't lay down you keep moving and fighting against it the upgrades do not get fully integrated then you will prolong uh, the integration of them and you will also prolong your discomfort because you're fighting against something that is an energetic value upon the planet that you cannot. It's there for your benefit. And one of the ways to assure that you do 
lay down when these important upgrades is coming in, you'll see you'll be knocked right out that you have no choice. So it depends on the individual how they are affected. <clears throat> but that is enough on that one. I'll scroll a little bit further. Uh, Dale Lay says those grids now have been taken over by light. Uh, you are so uh, correct, Dale. Yes, it is. And uh, uh, it, it, let me say with that, that a lot may never know how much that the light is absolutely in control with us and how much we have activated uh, right to date. There is a lot more info that I and others will be sharing uh, perhaps in the near future, but it'll be shared to the levels uh, of those that understand and that need to know what has been going on energetically. And as I know most can attest, uh, any of you that have been doing extensive divine grid work for years, um, you are divinely guided and instructed. And if you go to try to explain sometimes what you're doing to others that are not awakened, uh, they, they will not even understand it. So sometimes there is a, a lot done by individuals that it doesn't meet the public eye, all of the extensive great work they do. But having said this, you know, over let's say the last linear couple decades, uh, the ground has been cleared, the negativity has been cleared enough that now the focus shifts on activating and bringing in the light. And by doing this, by shifting the focus at concentrating on bringing in the light and activating areas for the light, the remnants of the dense density are taken care of as a byproduct of what you are administering and anchoring into the sur surface. So you no longer need to uh, transmute or contend uh, with doing a lot of the clearing work. There are still some areas that uh, needed some clearing in preparation for activation to come and they are ongoing. But for the most part, uh, as you're saying, Dale, uh, the whole 5D uh, grid system is in place. It is up and running. It is functioning. There are times you can go out and you can see uh, what is the, the meshing, if you will, just perhaps uh, uh, several horse heights above you. and and. Right above that is the, the white ley line systems. Uh, some places it is touching ground zero or right on the planet, uh, the white, uh, I call them the white ley line because they are the 5D energetic uh, ley line structure. So it is here. So Lambert Page uh, says, uh, the planet, does it have an arc in it, Rick? Meaning it is neither spherical or flat, but has a curvature to it. I believe you're speaking about the dome. Um, you know, with that Lambert, uh, <clears throat> for all intents and purposes, uh, for my mission upon the planet, uh, the planet is spherical for I. However, it depends on each one's perspective in perception. For example, if someone uh, perspects it as uh, being flat with a dome shape, that's perfectly fine as well. With what we're doing, it's not to judge the perspective of that, for in this time, really, a flat earth or a round earth, if you will, doesn't matter. Uh, that has 
really not much to do with going forward where all of the truth is at. So sometimes ones can get caught up in these debates and arguments about it, which distracts them and stagnates them. So what I wish to say, keep that out of the equation. Does it really matter to ones? So this is what I say with that. And what I will say also is that, you know, with your multidimensional capacity and as a co-creator, you can make it both. So why does it matter if one thinks it's flat or one thinks it's round? When you can have both. So there is no argument per se with it. It's what each one uh, co-creates as a perspective. So that's where I wish to uh, just leave that at for now and I don't get into those uh, sort of uh, and debates, if you will, because it doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. Thank you. Yeah, uh, John S S Simon Sini. Hey, John. Says our vibration and rising consciousness will require discipline on the way we eat. What are your thoughts? Yes, uh, again, as I said earlier, you know, each one is guided in whatever way to be conscientious and meticulous with what you are eating at any given, uh, any given time and, you know, be more meticulous with what you're putting in your body. So the food uh, is very important. <clears throat> and having said this, you know, uh, some may uh, find it difficult uh, getting better food. But what one also, if you're beginning your journey and you need to transition your diet, you know, perhaps you were eating a lot. But once you eat better food, you are getting more energy in lesser amounts than what you were from let's say the garbage processed food. So you'll find you don't need as much and you'll also find your vibration raising when you need to transition. And if you were worried about your grocery bill, well, what you'll come to find out, the organic foods might be a little bit more expensive than what you were eating before. However, when you average it out in the long run, because you are also eating less and you are changing your reality and much more, you'll find out that it's perhaps even cheaper. So do yourself a favor, any of you watching this that may be just awakening and know that what you eat is very important. And you will confirm it to yourself. So, but first you got to take the step towards it to see it. And of course, uh, raw vegetable uh, diet is, is one of the, the best to do that. You're eating um, and right out of the garden is even much more uh, energetic and higher vibrational. And keep it clean, yes, organic. You will notice the difference. Uh, for example, with just regular celery or organic celery, sometimes you'll notice tenfold. If you were to eat uh, just regular celery, you'll say, oh, okay, it tastes good. You won't feel anything. But if you were to eat organic celery, that is, that is organic, you will like more of the taste, but you'll also feel in the vessel, you begin to activate the feelings with the energy as well. And you'll see why it's so important to eat the organic rather than GMO or what have you. Uh, for us, that is advanced, and I know many of you can attest, to eat um, processed food or any of that. It's just like if you're eating cardboard or plastic, if you're to eat it, there is no resonance, there is no energetic value with it. It's not real whole food. So you don't want to be putting that into your body because all of the deposits of 
the contaminant uh, metals and whatever else is in it, uh, it, it just drains your energy because your energy in your body is trying to get this foreign material out of your body. It's not natural, it's synthetic. So a lot of your energy then gets expended and your vibration is lower because your body is fighting trying to get this foreign substances out of your body to keep it simple. <laughs> so Lambert Page says, the loved ones come back, I hear. That's the biblical, the dead shall rise. So my father passed over in 2019. He returns. I feel him around me, Rick. The way I, I wish to say is that, uh, you know, yes, your, uh, your loved ones, if you will, that have ascended, it's really that they're not coming back. It's that we're going forward to the dimensional space where they are at as well. So as part of that, yes, it can be uh, very real that uh, you will see this or see, let's say, a, uh, let's say a very, you will have a recognition as well if they are in another body too, but you recognize the soul. But yes, yes, this does occur as we go forward and uh, the dimensional walls thin. For example, you're in, let's say, uh, the fifth dimensional state, and let's say they're up in the sixth dimension, but if, when those walls become thin at times and your vibration is raised, then there can be that interaction as well for now, but it gets better. Uh, Tammy Cunningham asks, should we stop eating meat? My answer to that is yes. However, it's on the individual basis. But the ultimate thing to do is to stop eating the meat when one is ready. And there is reasons for that. Just let me check my phone for a sec. Oh, okay, Femke, she's still up, just sent a, a CME, perhaps arriving. Uh, so one of the important things for stop eating meat is that, you know, perhaps early in your journey, you come to realize that the animals actually have a soul, and you began to know that the memory and uh, the imprints of the memory and the DNA uh, from an animal that the memory is in the soul. I need to get this a little bit uh, more understandable. So <clears throat> when you recognize that animals have souls, then you would be, let's say, you begin to feel that you would be uh, cannibalistic, you know, to eat another soul. So that is correct, and with the the DNA, when you look at an animal, let's take a cow, for example, uh, the cow is not, the cow's body is not changing into crystalline. The cow's body is a carbon-based animal. And this is important because when you begin eating DNA that has uh, the programming, if you will, in that meat is carbon-based. It does not have the capacity for the crystalline um, DNA. So when you eat meat at the smallest level is the DNA fragments of that meat that goes into every cell of your body where your body begins to use it as energy. But where it's DNA, it is the most microscopic and at the same time, if a body 
has begun the transitioning process of the restranding of the DNA where it breaks apart and new pieces are assembled and comes in. If you have meat, uh, if you have DNA from another animal upon the planet that is capable of unconditional love and you do not again wish to have that in there. There's a little bit of interference here somehow. Uh, for your transitioning your body uh, to be crystalline and you do not uh, again wish to have that in, to keep it simple. I'll get off that subject because something's not flowing with it right now. I have the full knowing but there's something else that is occurring. But simple answer, yeah, don't eat meat. And Lambert Page asks, what would you recommend to eat during ascension? Raw vegetables, that is one of the best, uh, all of your best water you can get from the spring, uh, from a hill is the best. Uh, keep your foods alkaline. Uh, be very uh, be very meticulous with the acids in fruits as well. You need to keep your vessel with a pH level above seven. This makes it much easier for the transitioning. And remember, all of your digestive acids that you had before are changing. You are evolving, meaning where you might have been able to take apple cider vinegar before um, to assist you. That may no longer be the case because some of these acids no longer are in your stomach. And if you're to take apple cider vinegar or lemon, citrus fruits with the citric acids, uh, you may find you'll begin to experience a lot of burning and uh, a lot of rejection by your body to these acids because the acids has changed that used to when two acids combine to make the alkaline environment one of these acids are no longer there so uh, be very careful uh, with the acids the acetic acetic acids the vinegars uh, most of your preservatives will also have it in if they are not natural preservatives. So be careful with that. Uh, no white bread, no white sugar. It's uh, the chlorine in it and other things is not compatible with your body, uh, with the ones that are transitioning to the crystalline base. So you don't wish to have that in there. Um, also, uh, so no white sugar, no white flour, uh, but you can, all of the natural cane sugar you can have, and that is actually a very good source of energy, and it's pure, it's not contaminated, so it comes straight from the cane, if you will, and of course, if it's growing organically, a very powerful energetic bo boost it can give to your vessels, so you can eat all of that you wish. You'll even find with the natural cane sugar, you won't gain any weight as well, uh, in contrast to the white toxic sugar. So those are a few things. Uh, Tammy Cunningham asked, does taking baking soda help? Yes, with certain ones that uh, baking soda did uh, assist, but also ones may reach a point where it is not effective, as effective. And see, ones need to realize that your physical vessel is under constant change as well. So where you had a remedy in the past that was, let's say, holistically aligned or what have you, there may come times that won't work for your vessel is constantly changing internally and, and thus so does your diet. Now there are two, at least two ways 
uh, that it is assured, one of the ways that it will come into your awareness, let's say that it comes into your awareness to stop eating meat, you'll look at it, you'll feel it, you may be still eating meat, you know, and you'll say that there may be something with that. Well, that is one of the ways for your soul, it's one of the premonitions for your soul to begin that. So once that comes into your awareness, then it begins to activate that it is what you do in the future, the near future, usually and typically. And the other way is that uh, uh, when ones, let's say, must stop eating meat and even alcohol, what will occur if they do not listen to the signs and it gets to a point uh, that the body uh, where the physical vessel is going forward and it must change, what will occur at the soul level being unbeknownst to the consciousness if they're to drink alcohol when they need to stop, they'll become violently sick. So it's assured that they do and also the same with the meat. So what I suggest for any is if you're drinking alcohol and eating meat, uh, don't stress with it, but if you feel to give it up voluntarily, do it. And, uh, and if that doesn't work, there will come the time you get so sick when you need to do it that you will do it. So with that, don't put any stress upon yourself with that. Just be conscientious and neutral about it and recognize the benefits of stopping it, you know, the more <clears throat> knowledge you are equipped with, then the more understanding you have for the reasons why it may be time uh, to leave some of the old things go. <clears throat> but again, at the deepest level, it is always uh, divinely assured that you do, one way or the other, voluntarily, or your source or your soul forces it. Uh, upon your operating consciousness to do it. <clears throat> okay, so Wendy Parker says, are we losing people? Well, there's a couple different perspectives on that. Now, the human souls, there are some that are going forward. There is never a loss, so you could say we're not losing them, that they are going forward. They are ascending through uh, the death process, if you will. But those are very, very few that are doing that. So they are going forward. There is no loss. Now, there is loss because, again, you need to go back to what has been said that approximately six billion souls upon the planet are ascending. There's about eight billion upon the planet. However, these are not all, these two billion is a mixture of, uh, let's say, the remnants of the darkness, uh, minions, soulless minions that do not have a soul nor do they have the programming within their organic vessels, uh, the divine blueprint, if you will, to ascend. So they are leaving, they are dying. Uh, many of you may begin to see around, you know, some of your towns that it seems there is less and less people. Yes, that is absolutely true, that there is less people, but what you also need to know that these, what you are thinking are people are not human souls because a lot of the dark constructs are being left behind. You also need to know that uh, <clears throat> many of the uh, dark constructs as well were, let's say, constructed in, in labs through in vitro, through cloning, and uh, these sort of things. So they cannot go forward. Any of the robotics, uh, if you will, that can be uh, reprogrammed and rescripted to the benefit of humanity, they will go forward. 
but it's an indefinite number of how much is amongst that two billion. But having said this, yes, many are dying, many have died, but you need to look that it's very, very few that are human souls that are actually ascending. For the most part, there is a lot of, uh, of let's say, dark constructs, if you will, that are there. And Lambert asked my perspective on cannison, uh, cannabis and hemp. hemp. My perspective on that is that, let's say, uh, cannabis is a good tool, as well as, well, hemp, the same thing, I will class that in there, marijuana. But to look at these as tools, and with this, also, what has begun to occur Occur more prominently about a year ago, or more prevalently, is that <clears throat> when you looked at marijuana before, okay, here's your present consciousness. So if you wanted to go into a creative, creative, let's say pacified state and relax, you would you'd be at this state, you'd smoke a joint or so, you would raise up to a much calmer level and perhaps even a higher place in your consciousness. But what has occurred, because the consciousness has risen in many, if one's uh, capacity and ability had raised above the benefits of marijuana, then if they had a joint, they would find that it dropped their vibration, that it was actually doing the reverse of what it did before. So first it had benefits, but there can come the time that it becomes a, a hindrance, an inhibitor to further movement, and they must let it go. So, you know, organic marijuana it is a good tool for those that, that utilize it, is what I'll say. <coughs> Uh, John says, any advice for operating with the old system of finance until the new arrives? With that, what I always say is for everyone to do what you need to do to survive with the old system, but also be conscientious that you only need to do what you need to do um, to survive and get by, but it's also at the same time, it's important to keep your focus on the new that is coming and be a part of that and connect with that. So you have a leg in two worlds, the new that is being created, you know that's coming, and you got this leg just to do in the lower world what you need to do, uh, to survive until we get the new world uh, fully opened, if you will. <clears throat> and John adds, they say money isn't everything until you don't have any. I'm finding it tricky to be in two places at once as an entrepreneur. Yes, indeed. Um, no, money isn't everything, and in the past, yes, John, uh, you know, for some of the very important, powerful ones at this time, part of their uh, transitioning and the realization in their awakening was being divinely relieved of all of their uh, financial backing, if you will. But also part of that, they saw the financial burdening tactics of the darkness, so they learned, you know, yeah, there's an actual darkness. I was the target of it, they would say, you know, but it's part of the growth. So again, uh, it is being, let's say, tricky for some, especially now, because the darkness, again, are raising prices, if you will, uh, forcing, uh, t attempting to take more money out of the pockets of ones, and there's a lot of uh, funny games going on with that to suppress humanity. So again, to keep it simple, just do, you know, what you feel to do, trust that, 
at any given time, but always keep in mind the new reality and keep a certain amount of your energy, if not, or if you're not able to focus at all towards the new, is what I, I strongly suggest. But thank you, John. Yeah, we're still rolling, correct? Yeah. How's the feed going, everyone? Is it going okay? Could I have someone uh, just let me know how it's going? Thank you. Okay, so another question. Tammy asking, would a sore navel be ascension symptoms? Uh, you know, with ascension symptoms, it can mimic every disease, every discomfort, every pain that was ever known to man. Uh, so what I tend to do is to attrib uh, attribute all symptoms to the ascension. But I do recall, yes, there was a period, I know in the past, that the sore navel um, came up. And right with the consciousness right now, there was a deeper meaning with it, but I just don't readily have it here right now, meaning that um, perhaps I'm not to answer that question right now. But yes, uh, there are times when it is an ascension symptom, the sore navel. <clears throat> So Wendy Parker says, as a mother, I'm concerned about my kids. The first thing I say with that, and I suggest to everyone, do not use that word kids to identify your children. It's because of a malevolent energetic imprint on it. And you need to be, you should be calling your children children or something other than that word um, without getting too deep into that. You don't wish to energetically set the playing field up for your children. Uh, let's say, you need to know, I'll get right to the point. With the satanic in the darkness, they offered up sacrificial children uh, to the horned goat god, if you will. And this is part of the reason why children were taken as well. But if you kind of refer to your children as the word you're using, uh, unbeknownst to you, you are also kind of like setting it up. Um, and this becomes more important as you become uh, more of a co-creator. And if you are labeling your projecting an energetic imprint upon your children and identifying them as something else which is closer to what the darkness was doing, if you will. So to keep it simple, I just prefer and suggest uh, do not use that word kids to identify your children. Now the other part is one is quadriplegic and the other is abusing her physically and emotionally. Uh, he has some mental issues. What I have done in life to get my son to thread me. She says she feels like a failure. Uh, no, we had a little discussion, Wendy, uh, as I said. Do not look at it as a failure. What I need to say, you would not even be here listening to what I'm saying, and we would not have even been in 
to contact if you did not have the real uh, hope. So the important things is to begin to, you know, work upon yourself changing and overcoming that fear. And when you do this, it gets reflected into your reality. So it's, <clears throat> you will see the results, Wendy, as, as you began to go inward and focus on the energetics that you are projecting both consciously but also from your energetic field. If you have fear within you, then you are energizing your reality in a fear atmosphere, a fear setting, then it invites more of that and it also creates more of that fear in your uh, environment. So this is why ones need to go in and do that inner work and master uh, all of the fear spectrum. And once you do that, you see your reality begin to change. So it's a, a signal when this occurs, what has been occurring for you to begin to go in and do the mastery, do the inner work. Thank you. Okay, thank you everyone. Yeah, and yo, so others are saying it's streaming good and Yolanda said it stops often uh, for her. What I'm seeing here, it was stopping often as well. I'll answer a couple more questions and then that'll be it. Uh, for this. Thank you. Lambert asks, he says, he was told that we are entering the evolutionary age of the spiritual, the spirit and soul combining. Uh, he's saying that's the carbon and the crystalline converging. Uh, uh, what I wish to say is that, yes, you are evolving and what you are doing is transitioning the human vessel to a more efficient vessel that is able to withstand uh, higher energies and different dimensional aspects and prospects. So having said this, yes, there is an evolution occurring, but it's occurring internally, which is empowering ones beyond uh, the human, if you will, the human abilities. And you could also use the term superhuman, super consciousness with this, if you wish, but it's much more than that. It's a... Uh, it's, uh, integrating and activating uh, your soul's divine ability. And again, it's happening because of this ascension. And as many of you will know, many do not have the abilities that you have. And it is not needed that they do. It's a certain amount have been put upon the planet to awaken at the certain time and to come into their divine abilities to propel the ascension forward and that is divinely assured at a higher level that it is done. You're welcome, Lambert, thank you. Uh, Lambert says the real puppet masters. No, what he says, the real, this is what he says, the real puppet masters are the reptilians. I wish to say uh, the reptilians were part of the puppet masters, but what I need to say is that the masters that are much more powerful than those puppet masters because the puppet masters are only 4D uh, 
capable and oriented while all of us masters, including many of you, are multidimensional, so there is a no contest uh, with them. Thank you. The real, and, uh, you know, the puppet masters of the old with that is they all been disempowered. Uh, for the divine plan is written, it is out in text upon uh, the planet, it is integrated into the timelines, and because this divine plan is an actual um, entity, divine entity, if you will, nothing can oppose it nor compete against it. So having said that, all of the darkness and all of the malevolent ETs and all of that have been disempowered. It's just the transitioning, the rapid transitioning of uh, the human souls to see this, to see their choice, which is divinely occurring. So John asked the question, um, saying that, would you agree that the only thing I can do for you is work on me, and the only thing you can do for me is work on you? You know, that that is true as well, <clears throat> but there also comes the time uh, that John, when ones have done that work, upon themselves, that then they become part of, of a bigger whole as well. So everyone is not with this ascension meant to keep going through trials and tribulations and tests. There comes a time when the tests are all over, when you have completed your mastery and then you see what it was all for. So having said that, everyone can look at your experiences as tests, for that's all they really are. And you have uh, to pass the test, you apply the right choices to them. And the right choices is always staying in the highest vibration and the highest divine virtue, and uh, to not be projecting upon others any negativity and... Uh, you know, all of these things that you learn when you do your inner work, then that uh, creates the good reality. So once everyone <clears throat> that is needed uh, to take humanity forward stops projecting that energy out there, then the different reality, heaven on earth scenario is quickly... Um, uh, quickly created, and that's what we're doing now. Thank you. Joanna asked, <clears throat> Rick, do I have to have the jab from London to Switzerland? Uh, Joanna, you don't have to do anything you do not wish to do. It's your choice if you wish to give away your authority to someone else, but the answer is no, but it depends upon you what you wish to do. Now, uh, Eric asks a question, but I'm uncertain what you are asking if you wish to uh, re-say it, then I could answer it. And uh, something, when it comes to divine partner, partner, yeah, it's unclear, Eric, if you wish to retype type uh, that in there, then I can answer it. Thank you.
No. I don't see it, Eric, but, uh, you know, you, you, you said about division. Um, what I wish to say is that overall, it's not about separation and division. It's about the unity. However, uh, with individual, I think you're saying uh, partnerships, uh, within the individual relations, yes, they, they must come and go at least until two come together that is in alignment with each other and resonating. And uh, also there's many tests and things that are discovered along the way and with the divine relationships, uh, the twin flame concepts and the definition of it, it does explain a lot of the reasons why and what occurs. But you also, uh, everyone needs to realize that we're going very quickly to this new harmonious earth where there is the feminine masculine equality and utmost uh, mutual acceptance of the other. So what you will have is the harmonious relationships. You won't have any arguing, fighting, any stress. They will be as they should be, the harmonious relationships and the harmonious family units. So what is being the old system that caused all the disharmony and animosity in relationships is dissolving. It no longer serves, so it's not part of this new. And each individual that's ascending with the physical body going forward, they're going through their individual processes to come into complete harmony and alignment with each other, and thus you have your heavenly experiences, uh, you know, as a team, as a couple, or what have you. <laughs> yeah, so that's great. One hour and 17 minutes, so going to 18. Beautiful time. So with that, love, light, gratitude uh, to all of you and the ascensions ascertained and know this and get empowered, each one of you, and unite uh, and, and change this world. When all the co-creators all come together in one place of creation, the new world gets done much quicker. And, uh, you know, the old, one of the old sayings that one enlightened one can affect a million, even more. Um, the hundredth monkey effect is very true. And, uh, you know, the number of perhaps 4% to steer uh, the herd mentality, uh, that is very real as well. And, let me say we are above all of the proportions and representations of those several averages, meaning that uh, we are above the quotient needed to take humanity forward. All we need to do is get everyone from out of their distractions, the higher co-creators, and get them all united and focused with the one common goal, which is occurring. And that's what's uh, happening. Ones are getting stirred from their complacency, their comfortable uh, uh, 4D existence. They're getting uh, rustled out of that to come together, to converge, to create the new, because the old is, is fading away very quickly. It's destructive. So great. So, <clears throat> winks, love, light, gratitude, kisses, namaste, and this is victory, and this is unity, and these are good things we got it done. Uh, none of the Masonic uh, 
symbols and signs and with that you know the darkness tried to take uh, the good signs and use it for their own uh, however we know these are divine good signs and uh, we have taken that all back same thing you know they did with uh, inverted some of the signs like the original peace sign and all of this but everything is all good it's what you make it you have the full ability as a co-creator uh, to turn every symbol and use it for the light you know their time is up they took the divine symbols and used it for the darkness however the darkness age is over so turn everything back to the light is what I suggest okay have a great one everyone and Thank you for joining. Have a great night, morning, afternoon, wherever you may be.